Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have a top 5 video for you guys on GTA 4, and this is my first lore video on GTA 4. I'll have more of these coming up. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the top 5 hidden signs that Michelle, or Karen as her real name, was actually an undercover government agent. Now, as we know, Karen... Michelle, she was Nico's girlfriend in the first quarter of the game, but she was really assigned to spy on Nico, and then in the snowstorm, it's actually revealed, which is this. Hey, Nico. Hey, Jacob. <laughs> what are you doing here? This is no place for you, Michelle. As it happens, it is. You see, Nico, I have been working for the government. Oh. I'm afraid it's my job to watch you. That's why she's so suspicious. And now... I have to ask you for the coke. This is a joke, right? Please, please don't make this harder for me than it already is. Look, they're about to take down Elizabeta. I don't fucking believe this. Listen, I'm sorry it had to be this way, Nico. I'm really sorry. Hey, you know, you could have gone down too if you weren't so useful. You fucking bitch. Nico. Hold on. You mean to say you're going to let us off just like that? Not now, Guan? Well, my employers need the help of a guy like Nico. The office is in Algonquin. I'll call you. You know, as and when we need you. The Coke, please. Shocking me for tell Elizabeth so she now get our cocky and enough. So she was really a government agent. She was working for the IAA and the UL paper contact, which is this guy here. Now, there are actually several signs in the game that Michelle was actually a government agent. And the first time that I actually played the game, I didn't notice them. I didn't notice a lot of them, but they are there. And then when you actually replay the game a second time and you pay close attention to Michelle, several signs that she's a government agent. So here we go. Top five hidden signs that Michelle was secretly a government agent. So the first hidden sign that Michelle is a government agent is in the mission first date. And just like the mission's name, it is the first date that Nico goes out with Michelle on. And in this mission, there's actually a cutscene and we see a small glimpse of Michelle's apartment. Now, Michelle lets Nico into the apartment and she tells him that she's finishing her hair. And at this point, Nico takes a quick look around her apartment and he notices something strange. Everything is new in the apartment. And Nico actually comments to Michelle and asks her why is everything new, and she denies that everything is new. She says he just likes to keep things clean. So take a look at this right here. Coming! Who is it? Hey, it's Nico. Hey, I'm just finishing my hair. Come in. Thank you. I'll be with you in a minute. Did you just move in? No. Why? All your stuff is new. Some even still have tags on. Ah, oh, well, I like things clean. I can see that. But uh, everything is new. Yeah, I'm kind of obsessed with cleanliness. Things get on my nerves and I just throw them out. OCD or something? Oh. So, where are you taking me? So this first sign doesn't prove that she is an undercover government agent, but it does allude to the fact that she is not being truthful and that she is hiding something. It's kind of suspicious, and the first time that a lot of players would play this, you wouldn't really notice this. But that small detail right there where Nico comments on her furniture, that was put in there on purpose so that, you know, when you play through it a second time, you do notice things like that. And notice how... You, Michelle's reaction is no, what are you talking about? I think that in her mind she's like, oh crap, I forgot about the tags. And so you notice she just takes a tag off of one of the couches, then she just puts it away really quickly. That's a tag that shows that the item is new. You know, her excuse is, you know, I like everything clean, I have OCD, but it's clear that there's something not right here. And then she actually changes the subject and just says, so, where are you taking me? And Michelle does this a lot, she frequently does change the subject when Nico does bring it back to her. Next at number four, we have constantly commenting on crime at different locations. Now, there are different locations that you can take Michelle to on dates, and if you go to these specific locations, she almost always brings the conversation back to crime. For instance, if you go to Comrade's Bar, if you go drinking with her, this is the bar that's actually owned by Vlad, she will actually say that that place looks like it was full of crooks, or she will say that Comrade's Bar is full of criminals. 
And if you actually take her to the Perestroika Club, which is actually owned by Mik Mikhail Faustin, then she will say, I think some of those guys in there were gangsters. And if you actually take her to the Irish bar in Dukes, she will say, seems like a place where Irish gangsters would hang out. Take a listen to this. This looks okay. Interesting bar. Do you think those guys were crooks? I don't know about that kind of thing. That was weird. I've never been there before, but I think some of the guys in there might have been gangsters. No, oh, I really don't know about that sort of thing, Michelle. Interesting place. Seems like the kind of place Irish mobsters would like to hang out, don't you think? It's fun, you know. So now this is just really suspicious because whenever you go to different locations with her, she's constantly referencing crime. No other friend does this. And the question is, why is she interested in gangsters being at these places so many times? Why is she asking Nico questions about it? Why is she being suspicious in this regard? You know, this isn't something that somebody would ask on a date. You know, this place looks like it has gangsters here. I think some of those guys were mobsters. It's just out of place. It just doesn't make much sense. At number three, we have spiking Nico's drink. And what I mean by this, what I mean by spiking is that Michelle puts something in Nico's drink. Now, if you go drinking with Michelle at Comrade's Bar or at the Irish Bar in Dukes, then Nico will actually have a conversation, one of them, in which he actually says, why are you the one to always get the drinks? I could have sworn you were trying to put something in my drink. Listen to this. Why do you always go and get the drinks? If I did not know any better. I would think you were trying to put something in my glass. Trying to slip me a Mickey. <laughs> I think that's what they call it. Is that what they call it? You're not slipping this Mickey to me, were you? No. <laughs> of course not. I'm just drunk. <laughs> very, very drunk. And this is what's really creepy about going drinking with Michelle, because drinking with Michelle is very unique compared to any other character, because every other character, other girlfriends or friends that you go drinking with, they generally drink with you and they also get drunk. And you can tell they're drunk because they're wobbling around and they're saying stupid things. But when you go drinking with Michelle, Nico is the only one who actually gets drunk. He's wobbling around, he's struggling to make sentences, but you look at Michelle, she is clearly sober, she hasn't drunk anything at all, she's not wobbling around, she She's just not drunk. And now the question is, why is Nico always drinking and she isn't? I think that she's trying to get Nico drunk really fast, and I think that she is trying to make it seem like she's drinking, but she's not. Now, why is this? The reason this is, and the reason that she's quiet in these scenes specifically, is because she's hoping that Nico messes up and says something stupid to incriminate himself. Now, generally, when people are drunk, they tend to say things that they would not normally say. So things that people hold back, secrets that people might have, they would not normally discuss this if they aren't drunk. If they are drunk, there's a very high probability that people will say things that they normally would not. And this is primarily the reason on why she spikes Nico's drink, because she's hoping that she's, he says something while he's drunk without realizing it to incriminate himself. At number two, we have knowing exactly what Nico is doing. Now, there are several instances, two on dates and actually two in the main story, in which Michelle or Karen knows exactly what Nico is up to. And I wouldn't be surprised if she's well aware of every single one of his crimes. Now, how do we know that Michelle or Karen knows exactly what Nico is doing? Let's take a look at the things that prove this. The first one is in the very first mission. So in the very first mission, first date, you have two options. Now, you go on a date with Michelle, but as you're driving over to Michelle's house, what actually ends up happening is Roman will actually call you and tell you that the Albanian loan sharks are coming after him. Now, you have a choice at this point. You have choice number one, you can go on the date with Michelle and let Roman get beat up, or you can go and save Roman. If you go and save Roman, Nico will actually have an additional dialogue with Michelle in which he tells her that he had to help Roman with something. However, though, as you're driving Roman back before you actually go on that date with her, she will actually say send Nico this message in which he actually says, are you involved with bad people? Now, this is really suspicious here because she just met Nico. She has no idea. No normal person would know that Nico is a criminal. Not until they got to know him, at least. Right away, she wouldn't know that he's a criminal. 
So how does she know that he's involved with bad people? It's probably because she was watching him or she had somebody else watching him. She knows exactly what Nico did. She knows that Nico beat up the Albanian loan sharks and she knows that he also killed Blutter. Now there's actually even more. So on another date with Michelle, you will actually talk to her and she will say this right here about Roman. That. Good. You look good. How are you settling in? Slowly. Your country is strange. And your city makes people crazy. How's Roman? Okay. He likes to gamble though, doesn't he? I don't know about that. Mallory said he was in debt to some criminals. Do you know about that? No. That would really scare me. Organized crime, I mean. Me too. Do you think they'll try to involve Roman? I don't think Roman would make much of a criminal. I guess not. Interesting weather, isn't it? Very. She will say that Roman likes to gamble, doesn't he? And she starts questioning on whether Roman is involved with gangsters. And this, I guess, shows that she probably doesn't know everything about Nico, but she does know a good sum about it. She knows what Roman is up to. She has followed Roman before. And her excuse on this is that Mallory told her. Mallory told her that Roman likes to gamble. However, there's two more things. Take a look at this also now. Can I ask you a question? Sure. What do you know about that guy, Vlad? Nothing. Uh, he's a friend of Roman's. Really? I met him. He seemed angry. Uh, how you say, aggressive to hide inadequacy? I never see him again. Why? Mallory mentioned him, that's all. Okay. Do you think he's in the Russian Mafia? He sounded like a crook. I really have no idea. Okay. So right there, she said that she heard about Vlad right there, and she asked Nico if he hung around Vlad, and she said, I heard that Vlad might be Russian Mafia, and then she also brings it right back to Mallory, and she says, Mallory told me. Now, there's still one more. This is the final one, and this is actually right up until the point in which Michelle or Karen reveals herself to be an undercover government agent. She will actually give Nico this specific phone call about Elisabetta. Phone call from Michelle. Hey, Nico. Mallory tells me you are working with Elisabetta Torres now. Do you two know each other? Elisabetta seems to have a lot of friends. That's because she's a dealer, Nico. Junkies like the people who supply them with drugs. You aren't getting involved in that world, are you? I am trying to avoid it, Michelle. Or maybe I do a few errands for Elisabetta. Nothing serious, though. I am no dealer. If you need help with anything, Nico, just speak to me. If you want to get something off your chest, I'm a good listener, you know? I know, Michelle. I really appreciate your concern, but, uh... I can look after myself. I'm a big boy, and I must make my own decisions. See you soon. Yeah, Nico. See you soon. You guys notice that every single one, except the very first one, she's always referencing Mallory as her defense. And I think that she's referencing Mallory so that if Nico asked her, how do you know about this? She would say, oh, that Mallory told me. And Nico probably wouldn't follow up with Mallory thinking, oh, Mallory and Michelle are friends. So Mallory probably told her this. You know, most people wouldn't follow up on this. However, this is clearly a lie. I highly doubt that Mallory is actually telling her this. And I have actually proof of this coming up. But... I don't think Mallory's telling Michelle these things. Now think about it. Would Mallory tell Michelle that Roman is addicted to gambling and that he's in debt to the Russian mafia? Would Mallory actually tell tell Michelle that? I doubt that. And would Mallory also tell Michelle that Nico is working for her other friend Elisabetta and that Elisabetta is a drug dealer and that Nico's helping her with drug deals? I highly doubt that. Michelle is very well aware that Nico is helping to move drugs and protect drugs for Elisabetta. He's helping her out with drug deals. Mallory knows how paranoid Elisabetta is and I highly doubt that Mallory would just start gossiping about all these things that Elisabetta is doing to Michelle. And Mallory herself even says later in the story that there was always something strange about Michelle. So no, Mallory is definitely not telling Michelle these things. She's just using that as an excuse. Before I reveal the number one hidden early sign that Michelle was actually an undercover government agent, I wanted to make a few special mentions. And special mention number one right here is that her Mallory stories are contradictory. Basically, she's lying about Mallory. Now, how do we prove that she's lying about Mallory? Remember how I said earlier that she's constantly saying, oh, Mallory told me about Vlad. Mallory told me about Roman's gambling. Mallory told me that you're involved with Elisabetta. Like I said, I doubt Mallory's telling her these things, but how do we prove it? How do we know for sure certain that she's lying? If you pay attention to her dialogue really closely, you can actually catch her in a lie. So let's play this right here. Like 
you know, Trevor and um, Lamar as Franklin. Um, no boyfriends or husbands or anything? No, I guess I'm married to my job. Well, what do you do? What do you do? Come on, I asked first. I work with Mallory. What do you do exactly? So right there, you guys heard it. She says that she works with Mallory. When Nico asked her, what do you do? That's just one thing that she quickly came up with. I work with Mallory. She doesn't work with Mallory. I guarantee you that. And like I said, Mallory is not telling her these things. I doubt it. But there's even more proof to this. Listen to this other conversation with, with Michelle right here. Well played, Nico. How's Mallory? We haven't spoken in a while. Good, I think. Good. She's a great girl. I really like her. Me too. Nice girl. So she says, I haven't spoken to Mallory in some time. So let me get this straight. Mallory is your best friend, and apparently you also work with her. And now you're claiming you don't see her a lot. You barely see her, but yet Mallory is somehow telling you all these things. That's a clear lie like, right there. But also, the final nail in the coffin is the conversation that Nico will actually have with Mallory. So Mallory will actually call Nico when she tells him that she's suspecting that Roman has been kidnapped. And Mallory will say this. Russian's money. A friend of mine saw him at that car club on house point. He owed them money? He never told me anything. I heard they took him to a warehouse off Bomb Park in Bohan Industrial. I'll check it out. So Mallory says right there, Roman doesn't tell me anything. Roman doesn't tell her about his gambling. He doesn't tell her about the debts that he's involved with. Yes, she knows about Vlad, but she doesn't know much more than that. So Roman doesn't tell Mallory a lot of things. So right there, you can catch her in, in that lie. She's not working with Mallory, because if she was working with Mallory, she would see her every day or every other day, and then she's claiming that she barely sees her. It's a clear lie. Special mention number two is not paying attention during the cabaret show. Now, if you take Michelle to Perestroika, which is the cabaret club, you will go to see a show of her. And there are a few seconds in which you, the screen will actually turn to Nico and to Michelle sitting down. And if you pay very close attention to Michelle, it seems like she doesn't care. It seems like she's not even looking in the direction of the show. And I, maybe I'm overlooking something. Maybe I'm going a little bit crazy into this because I'm just looking for all the hidden signs. But I decided to take other friends with me to the club and to see what their reactions would be. And right here on the screen, you know, I have four pictures here. I have Michelle. I have um, little Jacob. I have Packy and I have Roman. And if you look at all of them, not all of their facial animations are the same, but they're generally all looking in the direction of the show. But Michelle, it looks like she's actually has her head down. It looks like she's not paying attention. I don't know, like I said, maybe I'm overlooking things, but to me, it seems like she's not paying attention to the show at all. And that shows right there that she's going out with Nico on this date for other reasons, other than the show. She wants something else. Special mention number three is liking the same clothes and never complaining on the same locations. And what I mean by this is Michelle is a very different type of girlfriend that you will go on dates on. She's very different than all the other girlfriends in the game and even friends that you hang out with. For starters, when you date different girlfriends in the game, they have their specific likes in clothing. Michelle, on the other hand, likes pretty much every single type of clothing that you can get early on in the game, but she never complains if Nico wears the same clothes over and over again. Even Kate, who really likes Nico, will get angry if he's actually wearing the same clothes over and over. Take a listen to this. You're wearing that. Good. You look good. I still really like this car. Good for you to wear the same outfit. I like it. I think you look good in that outfit. I liked it last time. This car is much nicer than the last one. I hope you've changed your underwear at least. And isn't that kind of weird that if you're going on a date with somebody, would you want them to keep wearing the exact same thing over and over again? Isn't that, you know, kind of awkward, kind of weird? So this is just strange here, but I think there's something more sinister behind this. I think the reason that she likes Nico wearing the exact same clothes and she says, oh good, you're wearing that, is because she might have actually put some kind of listening device on his clothes. Think about it. When Nico was drunk, she possibly could have put something on it and she could listen to him and record him at different times and he's not even knowing it. This is why she wants him to keep wearing the exact same outfit over and over. And on top of that, Michelle never complains on the places that you take her. If you keep taking her to the exact same place over and over again, she will never complain. She will just go along with it. Friends typically get angry if you go to the same place over and over again, and they'll actually say, oh, you know, we've been there before, I don't want to do that right now. And even Roman, Roman who likes going bowling, 
he doesn't like going bowling all the time. If you actually call him to constantly keep going bowling, he'll actually say this. What is going on, Roman? Want to go bowling? Nico, people is going to think we are kissing cousins if we go back to the bowling alley together so soon. We can make arrangements for another time. So right there, just strange. She likes the same clothing constantly, and she never complains on the location that you take her to, even if it's the same thing over and over. And number one, the number one hidden sign that Michelle was actually an undercover government agent is asking way too many questions. This is the thing about Michelle, is all she does is she just asks questions when you go on a date with her. Think about it, she never talks about herself. I understand that when two people are going out on a date, they might want to get to know the other person and ask them some questions, but it's just non-stop barrage of questions. Every single time you are on a date with her, it's a barrage of questions, and not just normal questions. She is constantly asking Nico about crime. She's constantly asking, are you involved with these people? Is Roman involved with this? Do you know anything bad that's going on? here, you would talk to me, right, Nico? She never talks about herself ever, ever. She will never talk about herself. And the one time that she that Nico tries to make her talk about herself, she just completely ignores it. And oftentimes she will actually change the subject. She'll change the subject when the conversation is not going where she wants it to go. So you don't know many people here in Liberty City? No boyfriends or husbands or anything? No, I guess I'm married to my job. Well, what do you do? What do you do? Come on, I asked first. I work with Mallory. What do you do, exactly? You're a hard girl to talk to, Michelle. I guess you're not used to talking to American women. I guess. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about Nico Bellic. There is not much to tell. I just moved here. I know, and you live with your cousin. What do you guys do? I don't have regular work yet. So, what did you do in Europe? I work in tourism, in travel industry. Did you fight in the war? Sure. How was that? How do you think it was? Seeing your friends die? Seeing men have their legs blown off? It was... It was... It ruined me. I'm so sorry. Me too. You may be here. Things will be different. You seem really agitated. I'm having some problems in my work. You found work. Great. What are you doing? Nothing regular. Maybe I can help. Tell me what's going on. I don't think you can help. It's nothing. I wish you'd trust me. Talk to me about your work. I'm a good listener. It's hard to explain. And not a big deal. I'm just tired. Okay. If you're sure. I'm sure. Um, I don't know about that kind of thing. What was up with all those questions, Michelle? Are you drunk? I am really very drunk. I do not like those questions. I don't want to think about it. Why don't you want to talk about normal stuff? Shit. I have to think about this stuff when I am trying to earn money. I don't want to think about it when I'm out with you. Questions. Questions, questions. All you seem to have is questions. When I am drinking, I do not like to be asked these questions. Just let me be. I do not like to be asked questions anyway. Uh, come on. I'm a nice guy. Yeah, I got into some scrapes. But who has not? I'm a nice guy. Can't you see that? So right there, you heard some of the ridiculous questions that she asks Nico. And, you know, when he's drunk, we don't know what she's asking him in the bar when he's drinking. But judging by the fact that Nico says questions, 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 every single time he gets drunk when he's walking at the bar is that Michelle is just constantly throwing a barrage of random questions at him. And the fact that he's drunk and he's intoxicated, he's more likely to answer her questions. So that's why I think she throws a barrage of questions at him when he's drunk. But the most outrageous question, the most ridiculous question that she asks him is actually on the very final conversation. Now, eventually, Michelle will run out of conversations. If you hang out with her enough, you know, she won't have any more conversations with Nico. But the very final one that she actually has with Nico, she almost gives it away. This is what she asks him. It's so obvious at this point that she is a government agent or some kind of cop. Listen, it's a bit of a strange question, but do you know where I can get some... some... Some what? Some... drugs? No. I didn't know you liked to party. No, no, no. It's for my cousin. Sure. That's what everyone says. It is. He wants some coke for a bachelor party. Fair enough. 
That is his business, but I am not a drug dealer. What made you think that? I just thought you might know someone, or, or Roman did. No, Roman is an addict, but not cocaine. Gambling. Yeah, sorry I mentioned it. I, I didn't mean to offend you. You did. So right there, you heard it. She asks Nico, do you know where I can get drugs? Can you get me some? This is so obvious at this point. This completely gives it away that she is some kind of cop. And she says, oh, it's for my cousin. And the thing is, though, the crazy thing is similar things like this have actually happened in real life, where undercover cops that have gone on dates or tried to pretend to be somebody's friend have actually asked them if they know where to buy drugs. And that's, that's actually technically a form of entrapment. And entrapment is basically where the police try to get you to commit a crime. So that is just so obvious. It's almost like she doesn't try to hide it at that point. And Nico, you know, he just assumed that she, she just wanted it for herself. That's what he thought. He didn't think that she was trying to incriminate him into something. But if you think about it, of all the questions, all the other stuff on this list, the fact that she asks him if he knows where to get drugs, that pretty much is just it. And if he, she actually got him to get her drugs, I think that she would have revealed herself much earlier than when she revealed herself in the snowstorm. I think that, that when she revealed herself in the snowstorm, that was the proof that she had on Nico. She had the proof that she, he had a lot of cocaine on him, he was carrying it, and that's basically at that point she blackmailed him into working for UL Paper. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I thought that Michelle was a very interesting character in the fact that they actually brought a girlfriend in the game that was spying on you. A lot of players didn't see this coming because in a lot of other games, a lot of other GTA games, you had characters that you worked for that would betray you. But when this game first came out, nobody saw it coming that a girlfriend was actually going to betray you. That was just a first that they did in the GTA series. But it was really well done with Rockstar, and they did a really good job with the story in this game and with Michelle or Karen's character design. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this lore video, please do drop a like, because I will have more GTA lore videos like this. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.